welcome to Gardenville. I'm Catherine and I'm Susan and here we are in mid-September. I have the glasses on, it's sunny, it is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It is for a September day it's lovely. Yeah. And do you know what, we're here with this fabulous flowering plant and it is just, look at these flowers in mid-September, isn't this what you want late in the season? You do, yes. What this, is it, Susan? This is uh, Anemone Tupolica uh, Honorine Joubert. Okay. Is there any common name for this, like Lulabelle or something? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Um, and then if you go and ask for Japanese anemones, you'll get... This is what you get. This is what you get. There are pink varieties, there are uh, semi-double white varieties, a double one called Whirly Gig. There's Whirly Gig, and the name's fantastic. Uh, then there's pink ones, uh, Queen Charlotte is a light pink, uh, September Charm is a deeper pink, and there are other named varieties. Now this one is probably the tallest of the, uh, of the whites, one of the tallest ones. Like it's seriously tall. I mean, it's what height are you? Tall. I'm five five. Right. So you're so talking about that sort of growth. So I'm talking about this sort of growth. Yeah. Yeah. It has. I mean, here it's got plenty of space. It does have one drawback, in that it travels. Okay. But can you, you know, control so you that? You can easily? control it. You can dig it out quite easily. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I love it. I just think it is a lovely thing. It's really pretty and it's fresh and it's warming or something. And the thing about whites, if you use them in a sort of distant part of the garden, it, it'll increase the perspective, it will make them seem further away. Oh really? Using, yeah, That's using a good tail for colours, people now. particularly whites, will so, make the distance seem greater. So it makes the garden look bigger? It'll or? make the garden look, look bigger, yes. Well that's a great little tip, isn't it? I'm, so would you suggest you plant them in corners? Um, yes, I mean I would, the, the, the trick is supposed to be you plant your what are called hot colours, which are the vibrant oranges and yeah. reds closer to you right. and your paler colours and especially white you know are in the furthest the distance because that will accentuate the, the distance. Wow and what I have to say I am a sucker for this box hedging even though it's a very expensive thing to put in um, I think box hedging is quite expensive. It has become a lot cheaper than it used to be. Oh has it? Yeah I mean if you start with small plants it has become a lot more readily available but isn't it to so nice the way it sort of frames all of this? Well, particularly here where you have this tall sort yeah. of plant which can look a bit ungainly. And the way that's growing out yeah. over that though, isn't it just it's fabulous? It's very effective here. Um, and of course the box hedging stays green. It stays green, it does So indeed. that's the great advantage of it. Just, um, does that lose its leaves now? Um, yes, this will die back. These will go sort of dead brown stems. And do you, you can cut, cut it them, all back? Cut them back, yeah. Okay, so... Um, no, it's re and you can cut it for vases. Um, as far as I know, yes. Yeah, yeah you can certainly It'd be do that. beautiful, wouldn't it? With loads of greenery loads and just of green the white. And, the white. and uh, what about growing this in a pot in a balcony? Um, I would say a waste of your pot space because it's such a. I mean, you're going to you're have going a getting lot of a tiny at the bottom, bottom, and you're going to get flour up here. So unless and you very have a huge flour. balcony, yeah, yeah it's a, a good and tip. A huge pot, I, I would avoid. Oh right, it's really fabulous. I have to say, great.